Hi, I'm Eric Mien and this is Breaking New Ground. Thanks for watching as we go from city to city looking at housing delivery in South Africa. It's hard to believe that it's been almost six months since we launched the first episode of Breaking New Ground here in Cape Town as we looked at apartheid spatial planning and the role it played in creating the society we live in today. Down there is the Malay Quarter or the Boak Up as it's commonly known by the locals. When the Group Eras Act became law, a lot of the good land, meaning land closest to the economic hub of the city, was appropriated by the government and given to white people. Surprisingly, the Boak Up, which was inhabited by descendants of the Malay slaves who came here, was left untouched. District 6, over there, on the other hand, suffered a different fate. The people who were forcibly removed from there were settled in townships we now know as the Cape Flats. Now the road you see behind District 6 over there goes all the way to the N2 Gateway project, which is a flagship housing development here in Cape Town. Let's go to District 6. Well, it's a short distance down Signal Hill where we are to District 6, where I'll be talking to Dr. Anwar Nagia, who is the chairman of the District 6 Beneficiary and Redevelopment Trust to hear how they are doing in terms of repatriating those people who have forcibly removed from District 6. We're on Signal Hill now. Dr. Nadia, could you give me a brief history of uh, District 6 with more emphasis on the forced removals? In 1966, on the 11th of February, some 66,000 people were forcibly removed violently by bulldozers, by the Group Areas Act, and the whole Slum Clearance Act in South Africa, where many, many South Africans, black, white, Chinese, were all forcibly removed to the wastelands of the Cape Flats and where they reside today. Mm -hmm. And this area remains the scar and the salted earth for many, many of Cape Townians passing to look at the Cape, Cape Town shame. It was part of the social engineering campaign of the nationalist government not to have so-called persons of color in the city and has to move them as far as possible out of the city. Now tell me about, you saying it's, it's about 66,000 people, people who have moved yeah. out of here. You got enough space to bring them all back, yes. descendants and all? Yes. We can return 4,000 families because this area has 94 hectares of vacant land. This land was kept vacant for 40 years. Wow. And for 40 years we were punished. We drove into the city day and day out and we saw our area just being barren. Grass was graying, rubble was in this area. And for 40 years, we must see this beautiful land of ours just being kept barren. So as part of the democratic process in this country in 1994, the government has instituted an action where we can claim our land. So we are now building 4,000 units that we will return most of our original descendants and their siblings back to this area. Well, let's go see some of the uh, yeah, developments. Yeah, no, we're excited to show you some stuff, yeah. awesome, yeah. After all these years, over 30, you know, it must be quite something to be breaking new ground here, <laughs> to use a phrase. Yeah, no, we are, we're definitely breaking new grounds, we're breaking new barriers. First of all, Eric, the redevelopment for District 6 is not a kind of nice to have. It's an important fundamental in transformation in this country. Mm. It's also a huge breakaway from the apartheid social engineering where their design was that people will never return back to the city. Yeah. And what, in a sense, we're doing is breaking new ground, but in fact breaking the whole moulds of the last vestures of apartheid. This digging into this earth determines, in fact, that we will never ever let people be subjected to the Group Areas Act ever again in our yeah. life. So what's happening here specifically? Well, we're quite excited to show you this. Yeah. This is the foundations of the next 140 homes. Okay. And in September of this year, at least 24 families will move back. <laughs> and then October, another 10. December, another 10. And January and so on and so on, until the next 140 is done. Yeah. And then just out of this will come the other design lines for the other 4,000 units to be built. Thank you for it's, talking yeah. to us here on BNG. It's yeah. a pleasure. We, we're just, just wonderful to have you guys around and that the government is taking a, a fantastic uh, uh, um, initiative in supporting us. Yeah. We thank them. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll be looking at the N2 Gateway Housing Project. 
Now the reason we are going to the N2 Gateway project is because it's one of the most ambitious in the country with a view to building about 30,000 units. So that should be exciting. Prince Trantis Tau is the regional general manager for Tubelisha in both the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape. How does Tubelisha work with the government? Uh, Tubelisha is a Section 21 company uh, under the National Department of Housing. We are one of uh, the housing institutions, so we are really the son of uh, the National Department of Housing. Now tell me about the N2 Gateway project. Is there, is there a symbolism to calling it the N2 Gateway? Yes, N2 Gateway is a, a national pilot project where we are piloting the integrated uh, sustainable human settlement. Uh, the, 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 the notion is that gone are the days where you have uh, areas earmarked for colored people, for black people, for rich or for poor. We are saying now let us integrate communities. Let us have, you know, colored people, Indians, uh, you know, black, uh, white residing together. Let us have the rich, you know, living closer, you know, to, 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 to the poor. And again, we are saying, when we started building houses, uh, after, you know, we attained our independence, you'll find that uh, houses will be built in a separate area, you know, for the poor. And it won't be properly, you know, structured, where you have schools, you have uh, creatures, churches, business, you know, sites reserved. But now, under the integrated human settlement, that is what we are really doing. So what we are presently doing on EN2 is that we have the rental stock where we are. This is Joe Slovo phase one. We have 705 units here. People here are set to pay 500 rents for a 27 square meter unit. And then the bigger unit, which is 48 square meters, is 1,050. This is in rental? This is the rental stock. Yeah. Now, why rental? We are saying there are people who are here in the Western Cape who are not, uh, you know, aiming at uh, purchasing properties, who have once maybe qualified, you know, for government subsidies in, in, the, in their respective areas, but they are here for, you know, job opportunities. Now, those people don't want, you know, to purchase properties, and they know that uh, they will never benefit again. So they will opt for rental. So that's why we have the rental stock. We also have uh, the credit link, so-called bonded, for those who earn above 3,500, because our subsidies say, only those who earn between zero and 3,500 will benefit on the giveaway houses. So for those who earn above 3.5 are then, you know, enabled to benefit on the credit link houses. Also, we have the giveaway houses that we'll be building here in Joe Slovo, wherein we are targeting those who earn zero to 1,500. They get houses for nothing. They don't pay a cent. But if you earn between 1,500 and one rent to 3,500, you have to pay 2,000 rents, 479 rents, the 2,479, which is a one source payment, yeah. then you move to your house. So basically that is what we are doing. And uh, we are accommodating everyone. What impact has the N2 Gateway project had on, uh, on the property values in Ilang? How I wish that uh, you, know, you were to interview some of uh, the owners of the houses in Langa and say to them, what impact really has this done to their properties? I can rest assured you now, the values of those properties have upscaled. Because mm. what we have put here, you know, as you could see, it's value. You know, there's value for money here. And what is clear is that properties that are adjacent to this have to re really keep, uh, you know, with the market. As impressive as the N2 Gateway housing project is, given its scale and the amount of problems it had to solve, it's not the only one in Cape Town. There are housing projects in Kailicha, Bonte Hevel, Gugule to Mitchell's Plain, and in industrial and farmlands like Philippi, where we are going. Cape Town is a highly divided city. That's not a secret, everybody knows that. But if there's any infrastructural attempt to link all the different communities together, it must be this N2 highway we are driving on. It goes all the way from the city center past 
most of the townships here, Langa, Kukuletu, Kailicha. Now, Philippi is an interesting study. Let's go and take a look at that. Scott, what in particular makes Philippi a sustainable neighborhood development project? Beneficiaries receive the title deed, and from the word go, implementing a project um, through support centers and uh, beneficiary groups. They are skilled from the beginning, basically, inquiring uh, skills in building, which helps them create and building other communities as well where they can take the skills on. So, in a sense, you, you, you're getting a piece of land that you own, you then yourself are involved in building the house, that way you get the skills as a builder and you're employable. And you're employable as well, yeah. And this makes it sustainable. And it provides you ownership of something that's yours that you have um, involvement with. So it, it's a sense of appreciation involved mm. in it as well. Mm. How many people do you envision will end up in this Philip area? We're looking at the Philip area of plus minus 40,000 people. Wow, that's a lot of families. It's a lot of families. Yeah. Is this like, a, would you call it a successful model so far? Philippi is one of the oldest models thus far in the Western Cape and it has been successful thus far. Um, there is always new developments coming out where the land has been obtained um, and projects has placed forward in the process of getting communities involved within the whole PHP BNG process. Mm. And, and is there, a, so you're looking to duplicate it around the province or is it already been duplicated? It's already been duplicated further up down the road, we have a project kicking off at the present moment called Philippi Park. There's plus minus 1,307 units going on. The com community is involved at the present moment, also starting from grassroots level, taking it up, giving, um, giving them some skill as well. And some of them has come from previous projects where they did um, require these skills and taken forward, basically. Wow. Well, thank you. Good luck with it. Thanks. Yeah. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be talking to the Western Cape Provincial Head of Department. But we also have Tuli, who will be talking to you about the upgrade competition right here on BNG. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Looking at the province's housing delivery uh, uh, mandate, if mm. you like, how, how are you guys doing here in the Western Cape? I think in, we're making steady progress under tremendous complex challenges. Currently, and very conservatively stated, our housing backlog in the province um, is at 410,000 units. And this data we gathered through the research that we've done two years ago, mm. through the sanitation study that we've done. Now, I'm saying it's conservative because two years later, a lot changes, a lot happens. We know from Stats South Africa that um, our population growth with you know, people moving into our province is at 17% per year. We, that makes us the highest population growth in the country. Um, Gauteng is pitched at about 11%. So that gives you a sense of the urbanization growth rate in our province as well. This year, we've had, uh, or the financial year that we've just gone past, we have set a target of delivering 16,040 square meter BNG units um, and servicing 18,000 sites. And we've delivered in excess of that. This year, our target for the number of 40 square meter human settlements that we will be developed with a range of different typologies and densities will be 19,050 units that we commit to deliver as a minimum. Um, and again, service 18,000 sites. So you see a steady increase in pace and our budget has also grown significantly that allow us you know, to pick up the pace of delivery while there's a range of other options on the menu that we are also delivering with a budget of 1.2 billion for this year. So yes, it's not enough, not fast enough, according to the need and the expectation and the real conditions on the ground. But with the resources that government have available, I think we're making a consistent, very steady movement forward. Has a census been done 
of the people flooding into the main city, let's look at Cape Town more specifically, to see if a lot of them need rental actually because they have homes where they are coming from. It's just that they are running away to come and get a job. Do you know who needs what in this group of people that you've taken on? In the city, the housing demand database is uh, continually being uploaded. Um, so we've got increasing levels of data coming through, but not a comprehensive set. In all of our other 29 municipalities that we've got in the, in the province, we are busy with the housing demand database, and those surveys are actively happening. And that's a key deliverable um, for the next couple of months for that survey to be completed so that accurate planning can be done on that basis as well. Moving on to Philippi, when you talk to the people on the ground, it's one of the most successful uh, models of empowering a community. Uh, so you have to look beyond the surface, obviously. Um, wh what's your take on that? Is it as successful as it looks? Uh, uh, and if it is, is it something that you're replicating quite rapidly? We believe that the pride, the honor, the sense of ownership and belonging that comes with people building their own houses is invaluable. And that's a program that we will continue to support, look for ways to enhance and improve it. Now, the Philippi Kanyesile project is a good case study. Not all PHP projects, unfortunately, have the great ingredients that you've seen actively happening in Philippi that makes it a successful project. This is a very important part of the housing delivery system within the Western Cape. And it's about our minister having taken a very you know, proactive stance on how to ensure that these projects are accelerated and that people's sense of pride are untainted in the process. He deliver, in January of this year, we launched the 1,000 volunteer campaign. We've basically put a call out there and called on citizens from all walks of life that have responded with great generosity to come to Wallace Dean to build what we initially started out to build 150 houses in Harney Street in Wallace Dean. The sense, the spirit has been so positive that the volunteers have built 277 houses to date of exemplary quality and provincial officials from different departments have pitched in and, for example, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of the Premier, the Department of Economic Development, um, each have built their own houses with a team of volunteers and that sense of pride um, in what a house means to that family that's going to move in there has been absolutely phenomenal in building a greater sense of a home for all. That project and based on the success of that volunteer campaign, we are now closing off in Wallace Dean. Um, and we are moving that project to its next site where the volunteers will build 256 ho homes um, in Q Town, which is a colored township, um, you know, in the, in the Athlone, Cape Flats area. So I'm saying that it's definitely an important part of our menu and well managed with good leadership on the ground, it definitely can work as a great success. Well, thanks for talking to us here on BNG. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting us to yeah. share. Don't go away because Tuli is going to be talking to you in no time at all about our upgrade competition, the one that will be running here on BNG. And before she does that, let me say thank you very much to each one of you for the overwhelming response we've had to the competition. So here's Tuli. Upgrade your policy with My Home from APSA. SMS your full name to 32916 to apply. Let's break new ground together. Thank you, Eric. Welcome back to our PNG renovation segment. Now we have reached the end of our great project on renovating and upgrading your home. Now if you've been following, I'm sure you've gained some expert advice and valuable lessons that you've probably learned from to upgrade and renovate your home. We have saved the very best for last and that is planting a garden in your own home. It adds beauty to your home, it's cheap and it's easy for you to do by yourself. Now we followed a very simple approach in which you should be able to add on your own creativity and be able to do without any complications whatsoever. So you'll probably enjoy this gardening segment.
Victor, let's go to the garden and show you how to do it. I'm going to go to the garden and show you how to do it. I'm going to go to the garden and show you how to do it. I'm going to go to the garden and show you how to do it. I'm going to go to the garden and show you how to do it. I'm going to go to the garden and show you how to do it. I'm going to go to the garden. Lama thoma ko fitla mo ko fitla mo ntlo e ulo ko bereka ko yona o e levela la pele o levela la orana o ka isa mo ko yona o levela la orana designa ga o ilo tla mo ka e o levela la orana di tharetsa go tlo di bia joang wa le ka mo khotlo mo designa ka gona mo bo wa lona le ulukisa joang mo bo o fitla go ona o fitla o tsheka o levela la orana ke mo bo mo joang wa levela la orana quality ya ona u joang so if mo bo ntlo le rich a o nyake composenga ta wa le ka mo khotlo go e leveletse ka gona mara if mo bo o le pua we have to uchele kumbose ngata and then uchele le le feta lai sa urumuwa kwa ukono wa rich na uzo ala lizuwa la chakao tiska tijen tiska vya jana kwe telele la ukono me ubuwana ulubu tlokwa uye tadi garden ni mwoli keishini garden ni lewa na kabu yona eta vye ilu mwondo like re mebu uputu uto urekisha nito ya kakao so lama toma kwa tuwa ivalu ita nito ya kakao toma kwa uchaka de garden ni outside wala na garden ni hako yika vye ilu ure imi wa so garden ni lewa na ina la praesa ya wana kwa tuwa urekisha nito and it's very much important uro uwe le garden ni kamu 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 mwja rati ya kakao kwa wana kwa ungo during the weekend kwa uswa ya meruko we can go around and then uchake garden ni ya kakao vere ke moyo wana 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 mwana Wouldn't you like to be surrounded by beautiful plants like these? You could do the same for your home by upgrading it and adding value to it. You could also win yourself building materials to a value of 10,000 rand by simply sending us a picture of your house to bng at housing.gov.za or simply post it to P.O. Box 31201, Bramfontein 2017. See you again next week at BNG Breaking New Ground and enjoy your new gardens. Have a fantastic week.